JavaScript generators make it super easy to create iterables with special syntax for defining the generator using function star and returning individual values with yield. Here we are defining a generator called simple and what makes it a generator instead of just another function is the fact that we are using function star where star is also called the aesthetics character. A generator is essentially a function that can be paused every time we return a value and the way we return a value is with the yield keyword. So when someone asks this function for values, it'll first give back the numeric value of one and then essentially pause the function execution. Execution will resume when the next value is requested and here we are going to yield two. Then execution will again pause and when the next value is requested, execution will resume and we will yield the value of three. And then again, the execution will pause and when the next time the value is requested, as we do not have any more statements, the generator will then terminate. You invoke the generator like a standard function and it gives back a generator object. An individual generator object essentially controls the particular execution of the generator function. The generator object actually follows the iterator protocol that we've looked at in a previous lesson. And what that means is that it has a next member which is of a type function. And we can actually get the individual values back from the generator by invoking next every single time we need a new value. Each invocation of next gives us back a result that has a value. And of course, the first value that we are yielding here is one. So value is going to be one along with the done Boolean, which will be false as long as there are more statements to execute within the generator. So for our particular generator, if we invoke next again, we get back the value two done false. We invoke it again, we get back the value three done false. And now the generator execution has completed. So we get back the value undefined and done true. The main use case for the generator is not the fact that it follows the iterator protocol. It is the fact that it follows the iterable protocol. So let's invoke the generator again and this time store the generator object that is returned into a variable called iterable. And as we saw in a previous lesson, we can actually prove that it is an iterable because it has a well-known property symbol.iterator, which is of type function. We've seen how JavaScript has special syntax for using iterables. For example, we can use them with the JavaScript for off and of course, if we for off on this particular generator object, we get back the values that we saw before, which is one, two, and then three. So to recap, we invoke the generator like a standard function, but instead of giving back a result, it gives back a generator object. And this object is both an iterator and it is iterable. And most commonly, you would use it as an iterable. With generators, it's really important to understand how the order of execution works. So let's add some logs to monitor everything that we can about the generator. We create a simple generator and add a lock statement before and after every yield statement. When we invoke the generator, we immediately get back a generator object and the execution of the generator body actually doesn't start. Only when a value is requested, does the generator start executing. So at this point, we will see the starting log as well as the value that will be returned after the first yield call, which is value one done false. And again, the generator will be paused and only when we request the next value does it resume and yield the next value and again it pauses. And only when we request the next value does the execution resume and we have a simple console.log complete at which point all the statements within the generator have been executed and it simply returns back the value undefined done true. Generators greatly simplify real world handling of iterables and just like with async await, which really makes promise based code look like simple synchronous code. With generators, we sort of don't have to constantly think about the underlying concept of iterators and iterables. You might recall this code from our lesson on iterators and iterables, and I won't even bother explaining it again because we can actually do it much more simply by using generators. So here we are defining a generator called range that takes a start value and end value and a step size. And we need to generate values that start at start, end at end, each time getting incremented by the step size. We can do that with a very simple for loop and in each iteration simply yield back the current value of the loop variable i. We can use the result of the generator as a simple iterator by invoking next and getting the individual values. So for range zero to two, we get zero, one, two, and then done becomes true. And even more efficiently by using it as an iterable with a simple for off loop, or even convert this range into an array by simply using the spread operator that as we saw also works on top of iterables. This example really demonstrates the beauty of generators and how they greatly simplify creating our own iterables. The real advantage of creating an iterable result over a standard JavaScript array is that an iterable allows lazy on-demand return of individual values. As an example, if we wanted to generate all of the whole numbers, of course, they are unbounded on the top side and we couldn't do this with a standard JavaScript array. 
but we can still iterate over them by simply using a generator. And now we can loop over whole numbers using a simple for off loop. And of course, we don't want to do this for infinity, so I will still add a break statement if the number becomes 100,000. As we've seen, we normally return a value back from the generator by using the yield keyword, but you can also use an empty return statement within this generator whenever you want to directly move the iteration into the done state. For example, we can create a class called cancellation token, which has a simple Boolean property is cancelled, which we initialize to false. We will utilize this cancellation token if we ever want to stop executing a particular generator. We create a simple generator called iterate that takes a max value and a cancellation token, starts off with i equal to 1, and then starts incrementing i, returning the values individually, till i is no longer less than or equal to max value. Within the loop, we also check the cancellation token, and if it has been cancelled, then we will early terminate the generator by using a return statement. To demonstrate how this return statement will work, we create a new cancellation token and start iterating till a max value of 10 by using this cancellation token. If at any point the value becomes divisible by 5, we will cancel the token by setting its is cancelled boolean to true, and then for the rest of the loop, we will simply log out the current value that got generated. The generator is designed to generate values 1 to 10, but since we cancel at 5, that is the last value that we will see. Behind the scenes, the return statement is essentially turning the iterator's done boolean to be true. In addition to standalone function start declarations that we've been looking at, JavaScript generators can also be defined as methods of objects and classes by simply prefixing the member with a star character. To set us up for success, consider a very simple generator which yields two values, the string A and the string B, and we can invoke it pretty much like a standard function. It gives back an iterable, and we can spread it into an array if you wanted to. To convert the method on an object into a generator, we simply prefix the name of the method with the star character, and this turns that method into a generator, which means that we can yield values, for example, a and b. This star does not become a part of the method name, so to use it, we simply invoke it using the generator name, which is just simple, and of course, we can iterate over it to turn it into an array if we wanted to. Converting a class method into a generator is exactly the same, you simply prefix it with a star, and of course, invoking it gives us a generator object which is both an iterator and is iterable. We can even prefix computed members with a star to turn them into a generator. So let's do something really cool. Define a computed property using the well-known symbol.iterator. And of course, since it is a generator, it's going to return an object which is going to be an iterator. And therefore, instances of the class fancy itself will become iterable because they will follow the iterable protocol which we looked at in a previous lesson. This is really useful when you are building your own data collection classes and want to support something like for off. And in terms of behavior, all of these generators yield the values a and b, and that is what we see in the program output. In addition to the yield operator, which returns a single value, generators allow you to queue the return of entire iterables simply by using the yield star operator. Here we have a very simple generator called 1, 2, which yields the values of 1 and then 2. Now let's create another generator that we will call fancy and use the yield star operator. The yield star operator works with iterables and as we know, calling a generator returns an iterable and a yield star basically yields those values one by one. So for our call to one, two, yield star will first yield one and then yield two. And of course we can yield star from any generator just like we can yield from any generator. And one thing worth pointing out is that I said that yield star works with iterables, which means that we can use any iterable, even the JavaScript built-in array if we wanted to. So if we iterate over the result of fancy using a simple for off loop, we will see the values from 1, 2, which is 1, 2, then 3, then 4, and then the values from 5, 6, which is 5 and 6. If I had to rank the coolest features of JavaScript, it would be a close match between async await and generators. In terms of utility, async await would win, but in terms of geeking out, generators are pretty awesome. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the next one.